All right, we are live on Facebook. Okay, here we go. Hello, Blissful Parents out there. Michelle Abraham, your host of Blissful Parenting Podcast. I am here to, to, today with another fabulous guest for you. I'm with Deborah Kosas. Hi, Deborah. How are you doing? Hi, Michelle. It's great to be here. Great to have you. So Deborah is from Healthy Parenting 360. And let me tell you a little bit more about Deborah Parents. Deborah is a, um, a parenting coach as she's certified by two national uh, parenting coaching programs. And she grew up with four brothers and parents that have very different parenting styles. So she knows firsthand the outcome of good parenting. So her passion is to serve parents and children, bringing deeper insights to parents so they have a beautiful, long lasting relationship with their children. And parents experience more peace in their homes and less struggle and through these proven methodologies. And I'm very excited to learn what these are because this is what all of our blissful parents out there want to know is how to have more peace in the home. <laughs> so Deborah's <laughs> coaching career has provided her with the opportunity to be featured on various talk shows and radio shows, national workshops, and was co-host of the Women's Legacy Show. So Deborah off offers one-on-one -on -one group coaching and uh, one-on-one coaching, group coaching, workshops, and all of that. So uh, Deborah really is an advocate for children and families and supporting them in healthy learning environments and healthy living styles and unity. So thank you so much, Deborah, for being with us today. And uh, let's just dive right in and tell us a little bit more about how you got started with Healthy Parenting 360. Well, thank you so much. And I want to say I love your platform that you provide for parents. It is really an honor to be here. Um, to get right in, the seeds were planted when I was young for making an impact through my father and my grandmothers. And then later in life, several threads came together. And it really came to fruition when I took parenting classes at my daughter's elementary school. I love to learn. So I thought, why not? And after I contributed so much throughout the classes, they asked me to come back to teach. And I loved it. I love seeing parents transform. I mean, we do see a lot of pain in the world, children, parents, families struggling, especially the last 15 months. And I knew I can help through the influence of my father, who by the way, was ahead of his time in parenting. Back in his time, it was, Michelle, I don't know if you knew people, but it was almost medieval, like archaic, you know, punishment, do as I say, as I do as I say, not as I do. So um, he had a very different style, which was, of course, loving, but respectful, encouraging. And my grandmother's influenced me to be of service to others. I wanted to make an impact. And Michelle, my passion is making a difference in the lives of children and parents so they can enjoy what I did, a loving, gratifying relationship with their children. Oh, that that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then pass it on to future generations. My father, his father before him, to me, to my daughter, it's just so wonderful to see. Yeah, it's so nice when you can have peace in the home and have those loving relationships. Now, not everyone was lucky enough to be raised that way. And so if you came from a home that was not so loving and caring, how, how difficult is it as a parent then to then change that pattern and become a loving and more, uh, more like the parent that you wish you had? I'm so glad you asked that because I really talk about you know, and so many of my parents come to me because they want that love, right? They love their children, but they, they don't know what to do. They're frustrated, angry. We're only human, right? And so yelling might come out. They might say something that's hurtful, but they know they don't want to do that. So they come to me so that I can show them through. Uh, there's many different ways, but today we have time for three of the essential fundamentals mm -hmm. that are really great for any relationship mm -hmm. but because we're talking about parenting it's the kid formula to transmute the chaos <laughs> so it's easy to remember right k means kickstart respect mm -hmm. i for instill cooperation and d deliver encouragement mm -hmm. because everything you do now teaches your children right the way you act talk your body language even how you react to things, you're teaching your children. Respect or disrespect is just one of those. Mm -hmm. So if I can, I'd like to give a 
brief background about the three different parenting styles? Yeah, I think that'd be great. I think that'd be really good for our parents to know the different parenting styles that you teach within. So then we can kind of see where we fit in there. <laughs> exactly. And, and it may overlap, right? Certain yeah. situations, this other parent may come out, <laughs> yeah. right? Our other parent, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So we do have the commanding, controlling parent who likes to take charge. But dominating the family is not the same as leading the family, right? So there's that way. And then there's the overly permissive parent who may have some rules or not, may enforce the rules or may give in. So when you are consistent, you are believed. If your child sees you as, well, sometimes you give in and sometimes you don't, they may not believe you. And thus, they may think the rules aren't real. So that can yield. It goes the respect out the door too. <laughs> yeah, respect and misbehavior, right? And then there's the proactive parent who uses respectful communication, active listening, not multitasking, really eye to eye contact. And you'll see when we talk more about it, how it really makes a child feel valued. Mm -hmm. and provides an understanding of the family values while using discipline that teaches rather than punishes. And this is what I love. And this is how to get into the proven technology and um, techniques. And uh, let's just dive right in. Um, they, there is a funny story I have. Can I uh, yes, tell you sure. a funny story related <laughs> yes. to a commanding parent? Because how we parent really makes that connection, how you transform into the active or proactive parent. Right. Did you ever have, Michelle, a parent that had the look? The look that said you're in massive trouble? Yes. And so did I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never wanted to disappoint that parent. I was never scared of getting in trouble. It was more the disappointment of that parent. <laughs> exactly. And when my brother was just four years old, he spilled dry cereal all over the kitchen floor. So there was my mother towering with the look <laughs> before she could do anything in his five, wise four-year-old self, he said, wait, wait, wait. If I live to a hundred, I'll still make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> I'm a four-year-old and it's true. So this is what I'd love parents to realize that it's our children's job to make mistakes. And it's our, our job as parents to guide and teach them. Mm. So a commanding parent might see misbehavior instead of a child learning. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we can start with K, kickstart respect mm -hmm. by asking what doesn't respect look like? Now, we already talked about not listening, demanding, controlling, yelling, shaming, hitting, anything that puts them down or makes mm -hmm. them feel bad. And even more subtle is if we don't have faith in them mm -hmm. or diminishing their light in some way. Michelle, I know adults that felt this way as a child. Mm -hmm. And so they're still working their way through that, right? Yeah, I feel like that was the, a lot of people's experience of childhood. Uh, yeah, for that, from what I've heard from a lot of, <laughs> from a lot of, it wasn't my experience, but that's what I've heard from a lot of, a lot of other parents. They were put down, shamed, their light was diminished, they were not good yes. enough. And that's carried over till adulthood. And boy, is it tough to reverse some of that conditioning. <laughs> Well, that's what's wonderful about when I coach parents um, that go through any of my programs is that not only am I teaching them how to instill great respect, cooperation, and encouragement, and so many more things in their children, but they learn about themselves. They, they it revealed to me just what you said. And mm -hmm. so it not only helps them as a parent, but it helps them as a person. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I'd love to frame this concept into a bigger concept of mutual respect. Mm -hmm. There was a, a client of mine, Kayla was frustrated with her daughter's need to lose some weight. So, she, you know, here she was trying to bring some health into and influence her daughter with some good health. So she insisted she play basketball. She thought it would be fun while losing the extra pounds, mm -hmm. but it was a huge battle. 
every time. And so I asked Kayla, was there ever a time when your parents wanted you to do something that you really didn't want to do? And she said, yes. Her daughter, I mean, her mother demanded she play basketball. <laughs> well, we, we talked further and Kayla actually hated to play basketball. Mm -hmm. She even cried over it. So I asked her, can you see how your daughter feels when you demand she play mm -hmm. basketball? Well, Kayla reflected with tears, realizing what she had done. She didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Working together, we found a win-win solution. Her daughter loves to swim and Kayla's concern for her daughter was met. But she couldn't see swimming as an option until she really learned to listen, understand her daughter's desire and learned about herself as well. So the way parents can shift is to learn how to kickstart respect through listening, giving choices. And I have different techniques mm -hmm. that you can teach rather than punish. And so this means giving choices within limits. Kayla saw less rebellion, less power struggles, anyone can, instead of being that commanding parent. Yeah, that's awesome. This this funny, this topic has come up a few times over our last few podcast episodes. And it's really interesting that just listening to what your kids want or feel can tell us a lot. And uh, one of them in particular was uh, one of our parenting experts on the Blissful Parenting Bootcamp a few weeks ago. She was saying um, about her daughter not wanting eggs every morning for breakfast and she was trying to make her eat eggs. And it was her body was allergic to eggs, she found out. And that was why she wasn't wanting the eggs. It wasn't she was trying to do it to be defiant. She was doing it because her body was actually reacting to it. So really interesting, like, you know, you really got to listen because there might be some other layers in and why she doesn't want to do something. Or And it's great that her daughter was listening to her own body. Somehow she knew. And, and that's the thing with sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes with commanding, controlling parents, mm -hmm. they think that only their way is the right way to do something. But guess what? Five plus four equals nine. And so does six plus three. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so there's, you know, we have to be open to different ways of doing something. And yet if it leads to the same goal. Mm -hmm. That's what's important, right? Absolutely. And um, I in kid formula mm -hmm. is to instill cooperation. So we do this by asking our children to participate and collaborate in the decision making within parameters, of course. Mm -hmm. And this builds on with the choices with the respect. So one of my clients, Anna loved her boys but she trembled at the morning routine. <laughs> and that is so common, right? With right. so many families, mm -hmm. that morning routine Transition. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and sometimes it's the bedtime routine, any routine. So I helped her with a simple shift that led to cooperation. I suggested during a calm part of the day that she talk to her boys, this is what has to be done in the morning. And she added, I don't want to feel rushed or stressed, just a calm, loving start to the day. Who doesn't want that, right? <laughs> so she told them, you have to get dressed, eat, brush your teeth, and the, whatever else was on the list. And guess what? She has to do the same thing and start work. So I suggested to her to ask her children, and this is really key, how do you think we can get all this done? Her son suggested a change. They put it into action and the next morning went smoothly. Wow, amazing. <laughs> it is, it works, it's amazing. And later that same day, her five-year-old son said, mommy, you didn't yell at me all day. <laughs> <laughs> Even as young as five, it just warms my heart because getting them, you know, something so simple and so powerful can change the life of a child and the family and how they feel. And the important part is you are now giving your children shared responsibility and ownership of the conflict right. and the ability to be part of the solution. That's awesome. So it's huge for so many reasons. 
what was the change that they made? <laughs> I'm curious now. Do you know what Oh, it was? okay. <laughs> um, it was something so simple. It was the order. It was just oh, the order. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and to us, it seems like no so big like deal. breakfast first, then teeth instead of teeth first, then breakfast or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or brushing the hair yeah. after <laughs> breakfast. It was so simple. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, we didn't get into it in depth. Maybe it was just the child being able to voice himself. Yeah. And that's all he wanted to do. And this gets into that kids sometimes need to have a sense of control in their lives. Mm -hmm. There's so much they don't have control over right. and, and asking them to participate gives them a control over themselves. They don't have control over if there's a divorce or moving to another right. town or school, virtual or hybrid, getting, the, you know, whatever it is, you're showing you have confidence in them that they can come up with a solution and they feel valued. Talk about what we talked about before that some, some people grow up not feeling worthy, right? Mm -hmm. So you're teaching cooperation, problem solving, even negotiation and persuasion for those of you who have teenagers out there. <laughs> now, is there now is there an age on this like this formula that it works doesn't work anymore? Like, you got to do it before they're eight, or is it work for as you mentioned teenagers as well? Some of these techniques work in any relationship. Mm -hmm. I have used them on my parents. <laughs> <laughs> We won't tell them it's okay. <laughs> okay. So I love I love teaching anyone, any parent of any age. I've taught parents of um, zero to four and five through 26. Mm -hmm. And people have been able to use this for any age. I love helping people when their children are younger mm -hmm. in order to get that habit, right? Mm -hmm. So that parents can have that wonderful relationship earlier on. Mm -hmm. You know, experts will say, oh, by time they're eight, 11, what have you, um, that it's even best. But if a parent really wants to repair a relationship or do mm -hmm. something different, don't you think it can happen at any time? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. And so we've got the K and the I, so now I'm curious about the D. This is wonderful. I'm glad you asked. It's about delivering encouragement. Mm -hmm. And again, can you think of a time in your life where your light was diminished or dismissed in, entirely? And for, for especially as a kid, you don't know. You don't know. Maybe you needed support and encouragement. So I help parents, even in the rush of life, you know, encourage your children, catch them being good. There are ways to foster mm -hmm independence, expand on their strengths, value your children. Mm -hmm. And I help parents distinguish between encouraging versus discouraging mm -hmm. and how it leads to success or failure, mm -hmm. high self-esteem or low self-esteem. And Michelle studies show that higher self-esteem actually help children act more reasonably and listen. Mm -hmm. So no matter if you have a spirited child or special needs child, the techniques I share our priceless in helping all children gain mm -hmm. higher self-esteem. And you probably know this, but it's really important because high self-esteem leads to courage and confidence. Right. And that's so important for kids as they grow older to be, you know, we were, we've been talking about this a bit too on this show is that when the kids have that foundation of self-confidence and courage and self assured they're going to go out into the world as much better human beings than the ones that have been, you know, dismissed and diminished and, and, you know, been torn apart as a kid. So this is so important, this foundation for us as parents to really grasp a hold of this before our kids go out there in the world. And uh, I think it's so important uh, that parents really pay attention to, to how their kids are feeling and growing up within our household. Cause Oh my gosh. Yeah. I would, I would love to have happy, healthy children leaving the houses instead of the ones that are broken. <laughs> exactly. And you, you really hit on, upon a few key points because, you know, how many adults go through coaching right now mm -hmm. to learn, to gain confidence and courage. And we need that in every stage of our lives yeah. from when we're born to beyond. And I love that parents learn this 
when kids are at a young age. Mm -hmm. And it is important to pay attention because I know of, of parents who have expressed that, you know, they didn't pay attention to one child because he got good grades, he had good kids, I mean, good friends, you know, all kinds of good things and just kind of took it for granted, but then found out later in the hospital room when he was um, called that his parent, that his son was taking drugs. I mean, we really have to pay attention no matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I got off on a tangent. No, that's okay. But... It's a, it was an important tangent that I took you on. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. No, I think it's, no, I think it's this is great to just that reaffirming um, positivity in our houses and you know, just raising really great, really great kids that are like as self-assured when they leave the house. <laughs> I love asking my parent, my, the, the clients that I have, you know, what, what does encouragement, encouragement mean to them and what kind of um, task or something that happened in their lives where they had ex, exceptional courage. And wouldn't you like that to happen with your children? So mm -hmm. encouraging them, even from being frustrated with homework, right? Mm -hmm. Or sports or musical instrument, name anything. We want them to get beyond their frustrations. And we encourage them one acronym, uh, one encouragement tool has the acronym BEND, B-E-N-D. So it's B for breaking down difficult tasks and goals into smaller mm -hmm. steps, more manageable, right? Mm -hmm. And it could be done with anything from playing basketball or even homework, mm -hmm. you know, break it down. So, that, and then E is for encourage, encourage the strengths they already have mm -hmm. and any effort and completion of that task mm -hmm. towards their goal. Mm -hmm. And then N is for the next step. They're now ready to go to that next step towards mm -hmm. the goal. So you just repeat encouragement, next step, encouragement, mm -hmm. next step. And D is for don't forget to celebrate the successes mm -hmm. and the efforts. Yeah, you know, both gonna, are important. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm glad you brought that up because there has been, I, you know, been learning that it's not just the outcome you want to celebrate or encourage them on the outcome of the activity, but it's like how they were able to navigate their way through that activity and the actions it took to get to the end result, not just the end results, right? Exactly. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely. And I just want to mention in the programs that I'm certified in, we believe that the um, celebration shouldn't just be rewards like money or treats. Mm -hmm. um, it should be self-motivation as well. So, you know, pat on the back, high five, some other things, a hug, you know, just the smile and the words mean so much. Mm -hmm. And it helps children become more self-motivated. I know there's different schools of thought on this, but I just want to let you know that's, that's what we think because, yeah. <laughs> you know, just if for them to get, you're not always going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. And so you want them to be self-motivated to get beyond that mm -hmm. frustration or challenge, just as all of us had to in the last 15 months as an adult, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh my gosh, this has been so great. I love your formula that you have. And I love that we've used the kid formula to transmute the chaos in the house by using this formula and knowing your parenting styles and knowing how you can shift what you're doing. Oh my gosh, so much more happiness and peace unity in the house is going to come and I just love what you have brought to us today so Deborah, this has been awesome and I know you have a special gift for our audience before we let you go today and where can they find out more information about that well it would be great if you could email me at healthy parenting the number 360 at gmail.com that's healthy parenting 360 at gmail.com and you can also find out about the the whole program that I teach, because we only had a drop in the bucket right now. Yeah. But the gift is the choice plus voice formula, mm, so that it's like a shortcut it. for less rebellion, less chaos. And I would love to share that with any of your viewers. That sounds awesome. So maybe it's on the and the on the subject line of the email, right? Free gift, something like that. So Deborah knows that it's coming from Blissful Parenting Podcast that you heard her on, and uh, that's awesome. What a great gift that would be. Voice plus choice. I like it. <laughs> sounds awesome. I'm going to be emailing you right after this. <laughs> so Deborah, where else can our families follow you and get to know more about your programs and everything? 
So you can follow me on Facebook, Healthy Parenting 360. And I would love to share this with many more people. It's, it's my passion and I just want to help everyone out there. Absolutely. Awesome. And, and the nice thing is you don't have to choose between being a likable parent or mm -hmm. holding your children accountable with this formula and many more. Aspects. Yeah. You still get to be a fun, nice parent too, without, without having to deal with the chaos. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That is all of our wishes, right? Blissful parents. All right. Well, Deborah, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Blissful parents out there, please go out there and connect with Deborah and have a fabulous week. Use some of these, some of the kid formula and tell us about it. Let us know in the comments that you went out and tried one of these uh, techniques and how did it work out for you? So we'd love to hear from you, more from you. All right. Until next time, be blissful. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thanks, Deborah. Thank you.